Hey, guys. Uh, first time caller, great show. Aaron Bingaman calling from Indiana. And I was in the room for the Ohio State-Notre Dame game. You know, I felt like Notre Dame did more to lose that game than Ohio State did to win the game. I think uh, Ohio State showed some gumption on that last drive. But the fact that they had the ball being the result of some Really weird play calling. Two passes and final possession by Notre Dame with four minutes to go. The missed field goal, two dropped interceptions. You know, what are your thoughts on uh, the observation that really Notre Dame did more to lose the game than Ohio State did to win the game? All right, guys, love uh, the program, and I uh, hope you answer my question. Thanks so much. It's an interesting question. I, I, you know, I, I suppose you could have to go back and look at some of the, the, the ifs and buts and candies and nuts of the Ohio State side of things. I actually liked the screen call on that last drive. I thought that was actually a smart call. Just JT Tui Omalau is insane. He's crazy. Yeah. It's, so it's like, but I actually did like that call. Uh, the dropped interception, I mean, it wasn't like it was like a, you know, a can of corn in his chest. I mean, that's a tough play. You could make the play. So I don't know. I, I, I kind of lightly disagree, but I can see how when you go back and watch that game, especially in a game where there's so few points and there's so few, um, there's so so few points and so many hinge points, I can see how you'd be kicking yourself. But uh, I'm sure Ohio State feels the same way. Here's the stat that I keep falling back onto: on the final drive of that game, Kyle McCord and Ohio State had a third and ten, a fourth and seven, and a third and nineteen, and converted all of them. Mm-hmm. And on the third and nineteen, through a bullet pass. Uh, that got him down to the goal line, which set up the eventual game-winning play. The thing that I can't get past is how there were 10 people on the field. And then Marcus Freeman, after the game was over, trying to play it off as if he didn't want to sub. Twice, <laughs> by the way. Twice. Twice. Two plays. Two, yeah. plays. Two plays. Couldn't afford a penalty. And like I don't know if I have a misunderstanding of the rules here, but that would have just been a half yard closer to the goal line, right? With a full yes. defense out there. Right. So yes. would you rather have third, fourth and goal or whatever – to go and, and goal with three seconds left without a defensive lineman and the gap that they're running the ball into, or would you rather be at the half yard line with a 275 pound person there? I think that based on the way that it was hard for Ohio state to score on that final play, that if there was a person there, they probably would have lost uh, regardless of where the ball was snapped from. When their but, alignment was off on that play too, <laughs> they were misaligned horribly. Yeah. In addition to having ten guys, yes. <laughs> so I, I think that like Ohio State probably should get some credit for going out and winning the football game. But if you want to play the lost the game away game, I think you can do it on both sides. Ohio State mm-hmm. played grab ass on a few fourth downs that they you know could have converted into points or moved the football, moved the chains, and and of course Notre Dame missed a field goal. They also uh, left some points out there. It kind of felt like just a good defensive battle. Um, you know, Marvin Harrison didn't really have much of an impact on this game, which is a really good job by Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame did everything in their power to win this football game, but I also think that Ohio State deserves credit for con- converting all of those tough third and fourth down uh, situations on that final drive in order to win that game. Well, isn't that the thing, too? Like, I, I understand this as a fan of a team that has been in a number of huge games and lost huge games, that there is something to credit the winning team with not doing bad things and taking advantage of opportunities. Like you can say like, Oh, Notre Dame had miscues and they lost the game. They dropped this interception. They were unable to convert this. They didn't execute here, whatever. They had all of these chances, but what Ohio state did is I I think not screwing up is underrated. And when you look at what separates teams that win 10, 11 games a year and what teams that win eight or nine games a year do it's you don't see the screw ups and you don't think about the screw ups. So it's not like front of mind. But the fact that, you know, Ohio State doesn't muff a punt, the fact that, you know, you don't have a miscommunication between Kyle McCord and Amika Egbuka and it end up with a Notre Dame interception or something like that. It's easy to say, like, well, yeah, that's what they're supposed to do. But like six and a half teams do that every year. And Ohio State's generally one of them. And so I think that's the difference that Notre Dame isn't ready to do what it's supposed to do on every single play. And we saw that come to pass literally the second to last play. And then again on the final play. And so that's where I think you give Ohio state credit is their feet are clean because they didn't shoot themselves. And that's, that's an actual winning skill for me.